Welcome back everyone to my first Kerbal Space Program YouTube video of the new year 2021. As you can see I'm currently in the process of deorbiting this little probe here. This is one of several similar probes that are currently cluttering up my low Kerbin orbit that I'd just completely forgotten about. They served as structural reinforcement points during the launch of my massive ill-fated Krakenbait spaceport and I'd apparently forgotten to deorbit them after they'd served their purpose. So my intention was to do this, deorbit all the probes I'd forgotten to deorbit, and start the year with a much cleaner LKO. But during my cleanup, I found another probe, the massive double orange tank fuel bus from my Super Heavy Skylon video. Now, I was certain I'd attached it to one of my space stations, but apparently not. It's just floating aimlessly in low Kerbin orbit. Until today. So, entering the space plane hangar, we can begin construction of today's vehicle, which is going to be an SS. STO because of course this is going to fly up into low curb in orbit dock with the fuel tank and then drag the fuel tank up to my ferris space station where we can extend it and allow this fuel tank to serve a slightly more useful life uh, aboard the space station rather than you know just adding to Kessler syndrome. Another benefit to this mission is that the space station could currently use some more fuel since I very recently drained almost all of its fuel supply for my recent retro SSTO mission in which I flew a big rocket SSTO up into space. It then ran out of fuel so I needed to fully replenish its fuel reserves in order for it to go on and land on the surface of the Mun. So by adding the two fully fueled orange tanks to the space station it's going to bring it back to a more full operational status. So we're currently on the runway, just time warping around for the space station to be in a more optimal position before launching, which it now is, so we can go ahead and fire up our four rapier engines. Now our initial thrust to weight ratio isn't great because we do have quite a lot of fuel in this thing. Although we are only going to low curb in orbit, we are going to have to drag those two massive fuel tanks uh, around in order to get them to the space station. And I didn't want to consume any of the fuel inside the fuel tanks. You know, they're there to refuel other ships. It wouldn't be good practice is to place them on the refueling station with some of their fuel already drained, which is why at face value this thing might seem like it has a little bit more delta V than it really needs. So this brings us back to what I said earlier and that this thing does not have great thrust to weight ratio initially because the rapier engines don't provide the maximum amount of thrust they can until you reach about 440 meters per second. So the first part of our flight is going to be flying fairly close to the ocean just to pick up as much speed as possible before then gradually pitching up and heading on to space, which we are now doing. <laughs> but yeah, first mission of the year, 2021. It feels like... I've, I think I've said this before on this channel, but 2020 felt like the slowest, but also the fastest year ever. Like, it still feels like March <laughs> uh, of 2020. Like, I was telling people, oh, have a good Christmas, and then it felt weird to be saying that. Like, wow, is it really Christmas already? It feels like just yesterday it was Christmas 2019. It was crazy wild stuff wild stuff hopefully 2021 is going to be better than 2020 i think most of us when reflecting on 2020 will look back and think good riddance to that year uh, but hopefully you know things will get better in 2021 i mean i've had my first vaccine dose because i'm an nhs uh, patient facing nhs worker so i was eligible to get my first dose of the pfizer vaccine i'm waiting for my second one that's going to be due i think around the end of january i think it's 21 days between them and of course more and more vaccines are going to get approved i mean just recently in the UK we had the Oxford one approved as well so vaccines are going to get rolled out hopefully that means by summer very optimistic hopefully by summer we'll be back to a slightly more normal uh, existence like in 2019 those were simple times 2019 I remember in 2019 right this is like legit my big fear of 2020 like oh 2020 is gonna suck because I work in eyes right and normal vision is often labeled as 2020 so i'm gonna have like oh it's gonna be so awful patients are gonna constantly make the 2020 vision joke like oh i've got 2020 vision in 2020 blah 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 and uh nobody made that joke <laughs> except this is what's quite funny on new year's eve december the 31st someone made a 2020 vision joke it took the entire year and on the last day one of my last patients made a 2020 vision joke and it went like this. So I was saying, like, I said something along the lines of, you know, you're, you have 2020 vision, which is like what we consider normal vision. A lot of people are familiar with the term 2020 because of 
I guess, pop culture use of it. I mean, it's not something that's really used, at least in the UK anymore, because it's quite archaic. But it's still very much common parlance among members of the public when it comes to describing vision levels. Anyway, I'm getting a bit off topic here. So yes, I say, oh, you've got 20-20 vision, which is what we consider to be a normal level of vision. And in response, the patient said, oh yeah, yeah I was saying this to my friend the other day, actually. I said, look, there's a pub and it's closed. There's a restaurant and it's closed. There's a theatre, it's closed. And my friend said, oh, it sounds like you've got 20-20 vision. But, um, tss, and that's, uh... That was the 2020 vision joke that I heard this year. I did, I did think that I would hear more, but 2020 had other plans in store for us, I guess. <laughs> but I, I, I just thought that was quite funny, that I thought it was going to happen so much, and then it never happened, and I just thought, oh, I guess no one's going to make that joke because 2020 has been such an awful year. But then the final day, right before the bell tolled, someone actually made a 2020 vision joke, which I thought was just a nice a nice uh, bow to tie on this year, I guess. <laughs> uh, as you can see, I have basically just blathered my way through the first phase of this mission, which is docking with the fuel tank. It was probably the simplest operation that we have to do on this mission, just docking with that fuel tank. The difficult bit's going to be getting it attached to the space station because we've only got two nuclear engines as our main form of propulsion, which is going to give us a fairly low thrust to weight ratio. And for our manoeuvring, uh, we've only got a few monopropellant thrusters. And again, we've got a pretty heavy mass. Uh, we're not going to be moving anywhere quickly. Now, you're not going to be subjected to the level of tedium that I was because I can just, I have the power to speed up the footage. I mean, we're six minutes 30 into the video, but this was like m much longer for me, basically. If it wasn't, I guess you guys know how editing works by this point. So as you can see, our encounter with the Ferris space station is set. It's about 1,500 meters from our spacecraft. So bit of a fair roll distance, but it's going to be fairly easy to just shrink that separation distance down a little bit. I'm doing my super lazy way of doing it where I just kill off all my speed relative to the target on the nav ball, burn towards the target for a bit, then rinse and repeat until we get a zero kilometer separation, which was fairly easy to do in this mission's case. So and as you can see, we are now a mere 500-ish meters away from the space station. We have visual confirmation. And I'm going to try and extend one of the existing orange fuel tanks. I'm going to try and dock this uh, big thing here uh, to one of those orange arms of the Ferris space station. If anyone is curious as to why I keep referring to it as the Ferris space station, it's because those two uh, round structures, I guess, on the space station are rotating gravity rings. And I built them uh, using maths, like I calculated the speed at which they would need to rotate, taking into account their radius, in order to generate 1g of gravity if you were to sit inside the gravity ring. I think it was a little bit ruined by the fact that the motors in KSP can't be uh, set to as accurate levels as I thought you could set them to. Uh, I think they can only be set to multiples of five and the rotation speed of this space station needed to be 11 rotations per minute but as it stands it can only rotate at 10. I can't remember the exact details but hey maybe you can Go and watch the video if you'd like to see this space station's construction. Yes, I'm cross-promoting my content. It's on a card on screen or in the description. There you go if you want to see the construction of this, of this space station. I believe the two orange fuel tanks were added in separate missions though. Like I believe one of them was added uh, as a space shuttle mission and the other was added... Uh, in, a, in another mission that I, I don't remember. Maybe it was another Skylon recreation now I think about it. Doesn't matter really, it's all irrelevant because the main th thing that we're doing is this fuel tank, which is nearly docked as I very awkwardly maneuver it to the docking port here. Uh, now I did say earlier that I didn't want to use any of the onboard fuel of the refueling tank for obvious reasons, but at this point some of you might be thinking, but you're using some of the monopropellant on the monopropellant portion of the fuel tank. Uh, and Technically, yes, but I am going to refill that monopropellant using the onboard monopropellant tank of the SSTO. I'd basically just forgotten to disable the monopropellant tank of the refueling bus, and then it was a bit too late for me to undo it at that point, so I said, let's just leave it enabled, and then once we've docked it to the space station, then I'll go ahead and just refill the fuel tank from the SSTO's storage, which I'm about to do now. <laughs> I've tried to make the editing of this video a little bit quicker than my normal videos. Like I've been a bit, I've been, I'm getting a little bit self-conscious that my videos are starting to get, they're starting to creep a little bit long. Like there are certain missions where there is no real avoiding the length. Like for example, one of my more recent videos was a Jewel 5 expedition and that was like an hour. But really I wanted to showcase everything I was doing and I couldn't really find a way to 
coherently edit it down to be any shorter. But for this video, I thought, you know, I'm going to try something a bit different. So in the space plane hangar, I sped the footage up to be way faster than my normal time lapse construction. And I basically tried my very best to not move the camera at all during the construction so that I can speed it up and you can still tell what's going on. This isn't obviously possible for a lot of things that require lots of detailing and greebling like space stations and surface bases, but for things like SSTOs, I'm going to try to do this a bit more in the future where I'm a bit more mindful of keeping the camera in the space plane hangar and vehicle assembly building as still as possible so that I can speed up the footage faster than I normally am able to uh, to make the actual construction phase of these videos a little bit shorter because I feel like too much of my videos is just the construction of the craft and since I provide the craft file and you spend the rest of the video looking at the craft in the uh, flesh I don't think there's I, I don't know I personally feel like not as much time needs to be dedicated to the time lapses but you be the judge what do you guys think I mean I think there is a bit of a disparity between content creator and content consumers sometimes in terms of what the content should be so let me know would you like less time to be dedicated to the construction of the craft or would you like me to carry on as I have been where like a quarter to a half of the video is the construction of the craft itself let me know I am genuinely uh, interested in hearing responses to this now as you can see my graphics did bug out a bit here so I did a quick quick save and then a quick load and it fixed it I think it was to do with one of my visual mods possibly scatterer though I'm not a hundred percent sure I don't think I've updated my visual mods following the most recent Kerbal Space Program update so I think I just need to go ahead and just reinstall my visual mods to make sure they're all up to date with the latest version so that might have been what caused that glitch if you have something similar happen it seems that pressing f5 and f9 fixes it and then we can just coast towards the Kerbal Space Center runway yes I did overshoot the Space Center a little bit during our re-entry but we've got loads of fuel left didn't really matter a great deal we can just cruise on down and come to a nice touchdown coming in nice and slow touching down just under 70 meters per second which is a fairly safe speed and then we can just roll on down uh, until we come to a standstill. I usually add drogue shoots to help with deceleration and because that looks very cool but I forgot to do that in this case so we have to just wait for the brakes to slow ourselves down completely but we got loads of we got loads of runway left over to do that we haven't got to worry about falling off the end but that's actually a wrap for this mission I do hope you enjoyed it guys and all the other missions will be going on in 2021 and hey we do still need to refill the empty fuel tanks that are on the Ferris space station so maybe I'll be revisiting it soon how would you like to see those tanks refilled? What sort of vehicle? Let me know in the comments below. And uh, any other suggestions, of course. I am devoid of creativity, so I'm always looking at uh, looking for ideas to steal. Um, there are things on screen as well. Thank you for watching, guys. I hope you have an excellent 2021. And that that's it. Good Goodbye.